Hey everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with a quick little bonus video. I have some really ancient tulip tie-dye, and I wanted to see if I could dye some 100% wool yarn with these dyes that I saved. I think that some of these colors are left over from June, and it is now October. So, <laughs> you know, and really you're supposed to use them within 24 hours or so, so I'm not expecting them to work great, but we do, I have used old, um, I used really old tie-dye once to dye some leftover, like a mini skein of yarn, and that worked pretty well. So we'll just apply this to the yarn and see how we do. We are getting reasonable penetration. Now the color looks good, but what I've read, and I'm being really sloppy here, but what I've read about fiber reactive dyes, like these tie-dye dyes, is that um, over time the dyes will kind of crash out of solution which is what gives you the, oh, I am making a mess. The dyes crashing out of solution is what happens over time, which is why they get less effective. So even though we might be seeing this really nice, brilliant color right now, that does not mean that that will keep. Ooh. The red is nice. I'm doing this because I need these squeeze bottles for a Dye Pot Weekly video that I am about to film. And I was like, oh, I could throw away this extra dye or film a quick little bonus episode and see, you know, what we can do. So I know that these dyes work super, super well on wool yarn and that you can get some really beautiful and vibrant colors. Um, that I have done before. Um, maybe we want the green over here. So, and unlike some of the food colorings that we've used um, in the past, you don't, we can kind of add these pretty quickly to the yarn. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this blue right now as well. We can add the colors pretty quickly and then kind of smush them through. Whereas sometimes if I were to do this with food coloring, we might end up seeing some really cool little streaks some overlap there. All right. Now I think that if, whoops, if these colors were still um, completely saturated, or like if these colors were fresh, then I might not use quite as much dye and I would trot, work harder to like press it through the yarn. But you can see that like there's a white patch there and just by squeezing, squeezing the fibers, I am able to move the dye through the yarn. There's less green. I think this green could be left over from St. Patrick's Day. Um, I have no idea if the purple is even way older than that, if that's left over from when I dyed the shirts for my Wellesley reunion uh, over a year ago. I'm not sure. So if you want more white patches, you could uh, do some resist dyeing and tie this off, or you could choose to not uh, squish the dye through to kind of get it through 
all the fiber. But yeah, so that was pretty fast. To prepare this for the color to set, and I'm gonna leave it overnight to give the colors a lot of time. First, I wanna wipe up some of the excess dye. I don't mind if the colors mix a lot, but I would like to attempt to keep things somewhat separate. So I'm gonna get another piece of plastic wrap and kind of put this through this center area to sort of create like a little seal almost. Okay, and now we'll wrap that up, wrap this up. All right, and roll up our yarn. And now I am going to place it in a gallon size Ziploc bag and put this somewhere safe to sit overnight. It has been over 24 hours since we set aside our yarn. Whoa, look at all that red. That does not look very pretty. <laughs> um, I mean, the yarn looks pretty, but the plastic wrap does not. And cross my fingers, I do not dye myself. So there is, aha, look how much color is coming out. These dyes are really, really old, so I expect a lot of color to come back out. I haven't even brought soap over yet. I'm being very careful because I do not want to splash. Yeah, the one time I used really, really old, and remember, I do not remember exactly how old these dyes are. Certainly months, if not years, for some of them. And I had some success with the red in the past, but I used, I was only dyeing maybe 10 grams of yarn, and I used like a whole half bottle of the red. So. Of dye. Out. So it does look like some color is staying in. And dyeing anything with a tulip tie dye kit, or probably any kind of tie dye kit, always requires a lot of rinsing. I'm rinsing right now in cool water, but already, even now with this runoff. The water is significantly clearer than it was when we started. And funny, it does look like the red is working better than a bunch of the other colors. Mm -hmm. So bad. These colors are pretty, but if we had started off with a fresh tie-dye kit, and I will do that here on the channel probably pretty soon because I need to tie-dye some t-shirts for Kickstarter rewards. But when I do that, we will have some leftover dye and I will use that to dye 
um, a bunch of different fiber types. Right. I'm going to add some, this is just some liquid Dawn fish soap. Now this is not superwash yarn, so I don't want to be too aggressive with the washing, but squeezing the fibers out um, and stuff is helpful. And so the water still has a pinkish tinge to it. But the goal, and you can see we're getting closer and closer, the goal is for the water to run completely clear and then we can hang up this yarn to dry. But at this stage, I think I no longer really need to worry about dyeing my hands. Yeah, there's very, very little color left coming out. And so I need to rinse the soap out and I'll probably do a soap wash one more time. And then once the water runs clear, I'll hang this up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. Um, it occurred to me that it was possible that the blue and green tie-dye that I had in the bottles was already diluted um, from when I used them originally. All of the dye stocks were really, really old. So it is impressive that we did achieve some color. I wanted to compare the colors from these yarns to some other yarns that I dyed with uh, fresher tulip tie-dye kits. This mini skein I used um, some dry yarn and I applied the dye to it. And then these two other yarns were from tie-dyeing a pre-knit blank. So you can see just how vibrant of colors you can get from a tulip tie-dye kit on 100% wool yarn. When the dye is old, it still works, but I think if you want a vibrant color, you need it would be best if you're using a mini skein and a lot, lot, lot of dye. In a previous video where I used red on the red old tulip dye on a mini skein, I was able to get a deep red color, but I was also only dyeing, you know, a couple grams of yarn versus 100 grams. So I think that these colors are really pretty and I'm really excited with what we got. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you for watching this dyeing video. If you want to see more fun dyeing videos, make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. You'll get updates when I go live and post a new video. Thanks for watching!